As inventors, we all need a little bit of help, and that's why I'm so excited to bring you today's interview with the founder and CEO of Inventor Smart, Brian Freed. Brian is an inventor in his own right, having invented dozens of products that have gone on to sell thousands and thousands and thousands of products, and now he helps thousands and thousands of inventors just like you help you get your idea out of your brain and into the marketplace. I think you're really gonna enjoy this interview, and you're gonna pick up some tips along the way to help you on your inventor journey. Let's go and get started. So I want to start by going way back when, when young Brian was a kid, were you the kid who was always tinkering and finding inventions and showing all your buddies in class at show and tell all the cool new stuff and just knew you always wanted to be inventor or was this something that just one day you woke up, had a need, saw an opportunity and, and jumped into it? Where, where does the inventor origin story come from, from you? I have a chance, Greg, to kind of reflect back in my childhood and realize that I was kind of curious about things. I used to break things apart and take them apart, but not, I don't think in a constructive, destructive way, but I think that I kind of wanted to understand how things were made. And uh, I think that's the point where people start to realize like, hey, um, there's all these things around you. Somebody had to have made them. So maybe sometimes people just stop to realize that, yeah. Somebody did this. How did it get done? So that was that was kind of like the way that I figured out that maybe I was always an inventor. I love that curiosity, right? Especially as as a kid, and now you start to get a little bit older. You start to think about, well, what do I want to what do I want to do with my life? Where did maybe your first invention come about? And maybe this was just something you were tinkering with and didn't end up ever selling one. But talk to me about the origin story. Of maybe your first invention. I'm reflecting back again and figuring out that. It started off with keyboard type of items, you know, attachments to keyboards. People were into computers. I was trying to make things easier, different ways to kind of let the, almost like the procedure and process of, of typing. Uh, but then as I started to get a little bit older, I started to get into stages of my life where I got engaged. I ended up having, uh, I got married. I had a daughter. So during these times, I got to see my wife in the kitchen and realized that there's things that she's doing that I think maybe could be done a little bit better or easier. And then uh, I had my daughter, Alana, and I started to realize that there were toys and games and sippy cups and all these different things that came around with her. And I things kind of annoyed me. And that's where things come around to me, Greg, when I'm coming up with ideas. It's things that annoy me. What's the problem? What's the solution? Is it just for me or are other people experiencing the same type of thing? And if they had what I came up with, would it make their life easier too? Such a great way to do it. I love that annoyance, right? Because if it's annoying you, it's probably annoying a ton of other people too. They're just, they just don't have that curiosity and that tinkering mentality. They're the ones who said, oh, I thought of that invention when they see it on TV or, or they see it on the ground and something like that. How do we make this a career, right? Uh, maybe take me back to that first invention that, that was you, you put out into the marketplace. Talk me through your first sale because that's always a fun moment for, for most inventors. How do we transition from being annoyed, let's tinker, to, all right, let me be a guy who actually invents things and gets them into the marketplace. I think one of the biggest things, Greg, is when you are coming up with an invention or an idea and you're coming up with and having people use it for the same reason that you came up with it. So I had a list and I kind of wound it down to picking certain ones that I thought were going to be a good opportunity, not from my own selfish perspective, but other people, how they would consider using it or perceive to use it. And then I started to build and make prototypes and then started to show it around. Now, I originally started to manufacture some products and they were okay, wasn't fantastic. And then I looked into uh, getting licensing deals and I started to get into that realm and that was okay. But my real break, Greg, was uh, QVC. I ended up meeting a major buyer at a trade show, and uh, she gave me the time of day uh, to kind of show her, invited me to the office in uh, Westchester, Pennsylvania, and, uh, and that was uh, my real big break. Uh, I was able to put on one of my products and got a chance to be an on-air guest for many years there, uh, continued to put new product on and also represent other inventors' products as a uh, product scout. 
and be able to guide them through commercializing and launching because they liked launching on QVC at the time. So yeah, uh, it was fun. It's been an experience. Uh, I'm sure it has. And uh, I can only imagine probably what that first day up at, at QVC was like, because it, it doesn't sound like you had a, unless we missed this part of the story, like a huge TV background. And all of a sudden they're like, hey, you're live. Talk to, you know, millions of people all over the world. And you've got 60 seconds to sell your product. And, you know, all, all the chaos of live, you know, different than what we're doing right now, where we're just in front of our computers and a microphone. Uh, I've been in HSN studios. I've done a bunch there. And I walked in the first time and there's monitors everywhere. There's people talking to you. There's only 20 greens like. What, what was that first day like for you? And, and, you know, how did you overcome that to just say, you know what? I know I have something that the viewers need. I need to get my message across. It's really about the message that you're looking to get out and what you're looking for the audience to buy, right? So my, my thing is to stay focused, uh, be able to understand the product enough to be able to understand what the consumer needs and match those two up to be able to hit a home run. And uh, that that's the way that I like to sell in a way. Um, but yeah, I mean, hopefully the product sells itself, but you do need some personality on those t uh, on those shows and, and uh, that platform. But yeah, lights, camera, action, you're on. Uh, there's all these things going on around you. And the most important thing is for you to be prepared and be able to get your pitch and the points and you know your product better than anybody else. So. You want to be able to get that out there and, and again, have people buy it for why you came up with it. Exactly. I think there's a, I think there are a lot of similarities between what you were doing, uh, you know, live selling on TV and what a lot of makers, inventors, brands are experiencing now with having to go live on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or creating TikToks or YouTube shorts or even just doing interviews like we're doing now. What are some tips that maybe you've shared with inventors who maybe they're apprehensive about selling their product and doing it through video because they're just like, they were similar to you. I was just curious. I'm the tinker. I'm the inventor. I don't need to be doing videos every day and selling my product, but I at least think that couldn't be further from the truth. But I, I'd love to hear some of the stuff that you share with inventors when it comes to getting out in front of their product and, and talking about it. I think it's your personality. Number one, you want to be able to have the product sell itself. So Look, uh, demonstrations are very important. I think uh, being able to show how the product works and what the purpose was, and I think people love the backstory of why you came up with it, it's great. I mean, it's a lot of fun. Like, for example, Greg, this was one that I was really, did really well for me on QVC, and it was in all major retailers and, and uh, supermarkets and so forth. This is called pull ties. So you take any plastic bag, cereal bag, freezer bag, you put it through the loop, you put it, pull it up, and it seals it tight. Sorry, I'm using this bag, <laughs> but just for demonstration purposes. But when I first came up with this, Greg, you know, sometimes when, you're, when you have the bread and you have the little twist tie on it or the plastic tab, I didn't bring it here with me today, but you take it off and what do you do next? Or you're trying to figure out which, which way the, uh, the twist tie goes on and off. So that's why I wanted to come up with a better way to do it. And that came pull ties. So one thing that I like to teach inventors and people that are coming up with, with new ideas is that if I just focused on this being for bread, hey, Greg, do you like bread? This is for bread, bread, bread. I can give it to you in another color, bread, right? But maybe you like it, maybe you don't. So what I did was say, okay, what are the other purposes? What are the other uses for this? How about cereal bags? I'm sure you have cereal bags left open, Greg. They're wide open. You just crunch them in, close the box. So that's not, they get stale. So bread, cereal, freezer bags, right? You open up the refrigerator and there's club bags in there of uh, vegetables, right? Those are left open, freezer burn. So what I did was I went into almost every cabinet or space in your kitchen. And at the end of the day, Greg, I went, how many people have a kitchen? Bingo, right? So I think that was something that really, had an impact on my sales and obviously, you know, having a platform like that to be able to get the message out. And then here's another one, real simple, right? During COVID, I was cherishing my paper towels, right? It was so hard to get anything during COVID, but I started to get a little cuckoo, I guess, and started to pay attention to a lot of things, especially being indoors. So I started to ask people to take pictures of the top of their paper towel roll. This one's almost done. 
I couldn't find a fresh one, but I noticed that usually when your hands are wet or dirty, you put your hand on top of the roll and you pull the sheet off and it was disgusting on top. And I was like, other people, let me see them. And I did. And I saw that it was really dirty and disgusting. So I came up with a simple patented product now. It's called paper towel topper. So it goes into any, it goes, you have a paper towel stand holder. You put it into the inner tube of any paper towel roll. And now when your hands are wet or dirty, you keep it on top, you pull the sheet off, and now the top of your roll stays clean and dry. So if you see this one, uh, it's clean and dry for down to the brim, and then you can use it again. So again, how many people have paper towel rolls in their house, in their bathroom, in all these different things? So that's the kind of mindset that I'm thinking about to be able to commercialize and be able to get good opportunity out there. So a lot of times, Greg, people come to me and they tell me, hey, Brian, I came up with a golf ball. Everybody in the world is going to want my golf ball. It does all these amazing tips, tricks, all these type of things. But Greg, you might play golf. I might not play golf. You step out of the golf course. Not everybody plays golf. So there are a good amount of people that play golf. But what's your window of opportunity? And that's what I like to help people to figure out is what you're going to put in and what you're going to get out. And that's why you know, I, I've uh, had the honor of being called the inventor coach where I'm able to help you and figure out if you have an idea, is it something that is going to make you money? Tell me about you. Let me understand the what you what your goals are. Is it something that you want to license maybe to earn royalties if you want to manufacture it? So there's a lot of kind of ways and paths to go through. But yeah, when you're coming up with things that are open and mass market in a way, there's opportunity, but there are huge opportunities in niche uh, markets as well. There is uh, so much to unpack from that. And three kind of three big things I wrote down. Uh, first is like market size window of opportunity, right? I think that one was something you really hit home is that, you know, with the with the tie, uh, the pull ties, if it was only bread, th there's only so many people that are going to want that. But now if it's bread and it's freezer stuff and it's I, like in my head, I went to like chip bags and like all of these all of these different things. Um, I think that gives it so much more use case for, for everyone. Uh, so market size, window of opportunity. The second thing uh, was use cases. So having multiple use cases for your product. Again, uh, I have interviews with makers from the Gromit like all the time. And I always ask the, a question, which is, uh, you know, tell me about some of your favorite customer stories. And almost every single person tells me, because it's the most memorable one, is the one where someone used their product in a way they never thought possible. And it's these customers are giving you use cases, something that you made for humans that now they're using with their pets. We just did like a shower head. Uh, I did this interview yesterday, uh, really cool, high shower heads. Um, and it's like this really cool shower head with different pressure. And she's like, man, my favorite ones are actually people that wash their pets with it. And it's a human shower head, right? So having these use cases, so important. And then the third piece from what you just broke down uh, is demonstration, right? Like dramatic demonstration, demonstration of your product is so key especially like in the internet, the way most people are shopping today, if they're scrolling and within five, 10 seconds, they can see how your product works, right? With the ties, you just showed it. And I mean, in two seconds, I saw exactly what it was, how it works, what are the benefits, how I can use this, the paper towel. Like, If you can demonstrate your product that quickly, you have a better shot at getting the market's attention. So uh, thanks for sharing those, those, those tips. I know that we have a lot of listeners, people watching this right now who are at that stage where they're like, you know what, Brian, you know what, Greg, I have an idea. And I'm sure you hear this, you hear this more than most. I have an idea for this thing, but I don't really know where to start, which is kind of a crazy thing to say, because there's things like YouTube and there's things like Google and there's conferences, there's events, but like, I'm sure you hear this all the time. Where, where do you point people to, to help them maybe to validate their idea and to, to let them know if they should move forward with this, or if it's just something they should be talking about with their golf buddies on a Sunday afternoon? I would say that the first thing really that people need to do is be realistic uh, with their idea. Look, uh, you came up with this idea, Greg. You have this emotion that comes through. Oh my goodness. I'm going to be a gazillionaire. I can't believe that I just came up with this invention. I got to I'm ready, right? So you don't know what to do. So you end up searching online. But really what I think should be done, and I'm happy that we're able to share this because people now can know. The first thing that you should do is capture it, right? Find a way to capture it before poof, it's gone. Somebody distracts you and it's gone. 
that's this world these days, but capture it, write it down, text yourself, email, whatever, and then simply go online and do a search and do a descriptive search. You might've came up with a pretty good name, but just do a descriptive search and hit images. Don't go through every link, do images and see if what you're visualizing is kind of out there already. And if it is, that's okay. And don't keep your eyes closed. Don't tell me there's nothing out there. There are similar type of things. What? Let's see what came up, right? There's search, the searches that came up. So capture them and just take it easy, kind of go through, capture what you see is similar. And then what I like to do is a, a, a patent search with a patentability opinion. So look, if I see something and it's pretty much the way that it is, uh, the same thing, then I'm probably going to move on to my next idea. If I have enough of a difference, then I might take a step back and say, you know what, that's good. But I think I come up with a more novel, unique, non-obvious way that this can be done. And that's utility, uh, utility patent. If it's something that's just ornamental, a design, then maybe I did come up with a different look of the way that something can work, but I can't protect the way that it works, but I can protect the way that it looks. So then I kind of figure out what to do at that point when I get a patent search with a patentability opinion. Is it something that I can rent the rights to my intellectual property and earn royalties from? Is it something that if I do make, am I going to infringe on somebody else's intellectual property? Or do I have free reign? Is it something that's a patent that's expired and I can make it and you can make it, Greg, and anybody listening or watching can make it? Or do I have the opportunity to be able to put some sort of IP intellectual property protection on it to be able to say now, hey, this is something that I can call my own and now I have some options for myself. Can I rent the rights to earn royalties? Can I manufacture it and then also have that protection for the certain amount of time while I'm manufacturing it and getting it to market? So I think that's really important for, the, for everybody is to just take a step back and do a search. And we could go through the other steps, but really a, a lot of times, Greg, I find that people end up at step five and six when they didn't do the simple one to make sure that you can call it your own. I think that's uh, really, really great advice. And uh, again, I love just even the first step, just capture, right? Like I think we all have this this device, right? And it's got like voice memos and things like that to just say like, I was thinking of this thing, right? And it's because I grabbed the paper towels today and they were gross and dirty and you know whatever it is and describing it. I think that's just so important because then it'll allow you to talk about it as you go do the patent searches. You can have some of these words, so, so important. I wanna talk about, this is kind of in the same line of, we've all had that friend of ours who, I have this great idea, but I don't wanna tell you, right? Like they wanna they want to hold it to themselves, right? Whether for copyright or patent, or they don't want somebody to steal their idea. Um, I'd love for you just to talk about this, this piece of it, because we live in a world where a lot of folks, like you can go to Alibaba and get samples made pretty quickly. You can go and do custom molds. You can you can 3D print things. Like there are very quick ways to get samples of products. Again, for, I'm talking for simple products, right? Not Maybe not something super complex and electrical. And, but um, for that person who is like hoarding their ideas, right? Wh what do you say to this person? Because sometimes as, as inventors, like we need help, right? We might need uh, people to help us and connect us and find different people who can help us with these things. So uh, what do you say to this type of person? Well, it's like anything, right, Greg? You 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 need uh, a specialist to be able to help you. I I I cannot build a house. <laughs> Maybe I can if I put my mind to it. I'm sure I could do anything. I I go to the dentist. I'm not drilling my teeth or whatever it is. I mean, you know, you go to people that are going to help you and guide you. The question is, when you are going to somebody, what do you do? Do you tell them, and now you're completely like. I told somebody my idea, I have no other choice and no other options. You don't have to be like that. If you hire somebody or you ask somebody to give you a quote to do construction on your house, they tell you everything is going to be amazing and wonderful and they give you a price. It's You have the right to shop. You have the right to ask around. You have the right to find out references and to look and see their work. But a lot of people sometimes work through their emotion and not necessarily put their business cap on. And that's the thing that is the hardest for me, Greg, is to, to make sure and help people to make better business decisions, right? Because you're gonna put your time, money, energy, effort into what you're doing. You wanna know that what you're putting in 
is what you're going to get out, what the return is going to be, right? So I think that when people do come to me with an idea, because I have friends and family that, hey, you're the guy, <laughs> or all day long, I'm talking to people about their ideas. And look, I carry a lot of secrets with me. I don't share, I don't tell, um, but there is something called a non-disclosure agreement. And what you could do is you can have people uh, sign uh, a non-disclosure agreement. And that means that they're not going to be talking about your idea to anybody without your permission. There are a bunch of them that are online that are free. I have one on my website, on my brianfried.com website at the bottom. You can download one for free. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, if you don't really get help to get it moving forward and you can DIY pretty much anything out there or you get you get help. And if you don't do that and you don't take the initiative, then you're going to be one of those people that say, I would have, could have, should have. You see that? That was mine 20 years ago. And you, you got you to gotta just take action. And that's what I like to do. And that's why I'm on this platform. And I like to get the message out. When you do have an idea, let's get going. Maybe there's something that you came up with that's going to make things a lot easier for people, change the world, whatever the purpose is. Maybe you have your intention is to do something for humanity, or maybe somebody just wants to do something to have a patent on their wall. Everybody has different reasons for why they're coming up with ideas. But the most important thing is that you keep your mind open. If you're out there, Greg, if you're waking up in the morning, you're in the bathroom, you're in the shower, you're in the kitchen, you're taking your kids to school, public transportation, school bus transportation, work, right? There's all these things that are going out around lunch and then afternoon dinner, you know, all these th TV. Think about all the things. You're at the airport, you're people watching, you're going to the shopping. I'm just kind of painting the picture of, look, you can be all around every day doing different things. You could be working from home and still have those type of experiences that something that you're doing, maybe it annoys you. Maybe there's a better way to do it. Maybe you're seeing somebody else do something that annoys you and you want to fix it there. But look, capture it and figure out that there's something there that could end up making a difference for you and for other people. Such great advice there. And let's say we get to that stage where we validated our idea. We want to move forward with it. How do we make money with it? And this is, you brought up some things, even in our conversation today, that I never really thought of. Because so at Gromit, we direct every every shopper to an inventor's website to purchase directly from them. Because we feel like that gives them so much control, right? They own the customer. They get the data. They can remarket to them. They can get feedback from them. But there are an infinite number of ways as an inventor, as someone who has an idea to get that product to market, to make money off that product. You brought up licensing, there's QVC, there's retail, there's direct to consumer, there's marketplaces. There's a lot out there when it comes to how do we go from idea to something in the marketplace? And this is a loaded question. I'm not gonna get an answer in 90 seconds from you, but just how do you think about this and how do you guide inventors into making some of those next step decisions of, all right, now we need to we need to get this product out into the world. How are we going to go about doing that? I learn about you. I learn about your product. I learn about what the future looks like for you. And I kind of tailor it to what needs to get done. And I learned and I understand where you are at what point, because some people will come to me with an idea in their head. Other people will come to me with a prototype or a finished product. So what I do is I figure out the easiest way to be able to visualize what you came up with. So is it a finished product? Is it a prototype? Isn't it, is it an animated video? If it's too complicated to make and you're limited on funds, if you're limited on funds, are you going to ask your friends and family? Are you going to take a loan? If not, then maybe licensing to earn royalties might be better because that means, Greg, that there's companies out there that already manufacture and distribute a pet product and you came up with a pet product. You're limited on funds. Maybe you're limited on time. Maybe you don't want to get into that world because you're busy with your own thing. Maybe it's a side hustle for you that you say, you know what? I came up with this idea. Let me see what happens and get it to a point where I can bring it to a company that if you go into PetSmart has product in there and you take your intellectual property, you manufacture it, distrib they distri manufacture it, they distribute it, and you earn a royalty from it and you keep going, right? Or I'm Greg, I'm Mr. Entrepreneur, 
I want to be able to start my own company. I, I'm, I'm all in. So then what we do is we get to a point where you have the CAD files and you have the engineer drawings which, uh, to be able to say, I'm going to go to find the factory, whether it's in the US or overseas. I'm going to make it. I'm going to do packaging and barcoding and warehousing and all the logistics that need to get done. And now I have a product that I can sell. And you know what, Greg? These days, you don't have to be in a retail store to be super successful. You can be on the grommet. You can be on other online retailers. And it doesn't take much these days to launch a product. Will you make a gazillion dollars? Maybe yes, maybe no. Will it go viral? Maybe yes, maybe no. I've had the opportunity of paper towel topper going viral a couple times. And uh, that was fun. Up and down. And then you get to do it over again. Hopefully we find the next one. But that's the thing is that you're coming up with something and you're figuring out what the steps are. And then, look, if it starts off as a side hustle and it turns into a full time gig, that's awesome. If it's you have a full time job and you have a couple of products that you're kind of side hustling and there's some residual income there that's coming in, that's great. You know, and that's the thing is everybody's different. So it's not necessarily a textbook answer. It's ways in sifting and understanding who people are and what their product is and what their what their goals are. It's super important to be self-aware, right? Um, because some people are entrepreneurs, business people. They want to jump in. They want to they, they build the Shopify site and get it all going. And others, you're right. They just might want to have a good idea and license it to a company and let them run with it, right? And they're okay with that. And it's really important to be self-aware of who you are and what you want out of this, this endeavor. There's you know, life, there's family, there's obligations, there's so many different pieces of the puzzle that, that come into play. Absolutely. You, you mentioned earlier uh, about having people use your product and, and uh, a customer story. It's interesting because I came up a while, a long time ago, it kind of skeeved me out way before COVID, that when, let's say you go to a party or you go to a restaurant and they have like the little snacks in the front, right? And people stick their hand in and then here comes us. We want to be able to put our hand in and it, it's gross, right? So I wanted to replicate scooping, right? So I came up with this snack container that it scoops. It's like a sphere and you open it, you scoop, and then you can eat from it. And I thought it would look really cool to have a face on it. So I, I went to companies that had snack containers and kind of were in the, in the you know, houseware space and I licensed it. I licensed the design and then I had Elmo, Cookie Monster, all the Ninja Turtles, right? And the Ninja Turtle movie came out once or twice during that time. So these things sold millions of units. And interesting story, I happened to be in Walmart and it was hanging on a strip clip there. And I saw, you know, a kid in, with the mom in the cart. Mommy, Elmo, I want Elmo. It doesn't matter what this thing was. I want Elmo, 297, right? So mommy said, no, I said, I'll buy it for you. So I took it out of the package. I gave it to the kid. I brought it to the front. I paid for it. And I said to the lady, my invention, I'm proud. I'll earn a royalty from it. Your kid's happy, <laughs> you know? So th those are the kind of uh, things. And look, you know, even uh, I have this product called um, adjustable food tongs, right? Uh, that, you, that you use. So the space that you have in the top of the tongs, Usually when you open it, it's like, bam, right? So what I did was I took that piece out and I made grooves. So the small, medium, and large opening. So if you're buying a set of tongs, Greg, and this one had an extra feature on it for the same price, which one would you pay? Which one would you buy, right? Exactly. So yeah. th these are the type of things. And, you know, just it's fun. Like I came up with some no useful but novel items. You know, here's a collapsible egg tray that you put your eggs in. And as you take them out... It goes back to this much space, so you don't need that whole carton of eggs. Just fun stuff, not rocket science. Um, some are home runs, some are, well, I'm still waiting for my home runs. I always want to keep that option open because there's always more. But there's, there's always a bigger home run, yeah. Right? But it's fun. And I get to work on everybody else's inventions. So I have a bunch in my head in the can to work on, but it's great to uh, to see new products people with inspiration and ideas on different things that they're experiencing that they want to be able to make better, improve, or come up with something new.
this is a great transition into some of the ways that you are helping other inventors. And uh, I want to talk about the Inventor Smart community, the app that you built. I want to talk about some of the ways that you are helping inventors. What's the best place to start here? Like where, if, if what, what stage though? Like if I'm just at, at the idea stage, you want someone that's a little further and how are you helping these folks to really get their idea out into the world? I started off with inventor clubs uh, locally, regionally here in Long Island, New York. I had uh, two, two uh, county clubs going. I converted it to the Long Island Inventors and Entrepreneurs Club. And now I have the National Inventor Club where it's live streaming once a month and that is now wrapped into the Inventor Smart Community app. So I'll get to that part, but really just being able to get the message out to people was, was very important to me. So I had the club and then I authored a couple books that have three books. My latest one is called How to Make Money with Your Invention Idea on, on Amazon or any bookstore. And then I've also hosted radio shows called Got Invention Radio and also Got Invention TV where now I have inventors sharing their stories. But these are the type of things that I want to be able to get the message out for people, to be able to get the right information, not just from me, but also people who are inspirational, people who have been there, done that, who are successful, who might have made some mistakes that you can learn from. And those are the type of experiences that can help you to be able to get to the next level. So the books, the shows, the National Inventor Club, I put an e-learning course together called Inventor Class. And then I started to realize that people still needed more to stay connected, even in between these things that we were kind of putting everybody together with. And that's how I came up with this Inventor Smart Community app. It's our own social media. So you can have that inventive mind. You could be working on an invention. You come into the community. There's different chat forms in there. There's the, the uh, e-learning courses. There's resources in there. You want to see trade shows. You want to be connected with U.S. Patent and Trademark Office information. I wanted to make a hub, Greg, for people to go in and be able to collaborate and communicate and kind of keep the noise out from other platforms to be able to just focus on you and your invention and, and, and keeping you successful, working, networking, brainstorming with inventors, just being connected and finding what you need uh, to, to be able to... Uh, work on your invention. So I'm really proud of it. It just launched a few weeks ago, officially launched. I'm still always officially launching, but I'm really yeah. excited about it. And I have a few other platforms that I'm incorporating into it. So I'm, I'm really excited. That's what I, that's what's keeping me up at night. That's my latest invention. This is, uh, this is so powerful. It's the Inventor Smart community. You can find it on the App Store, on Google Play. Make sure that you download it. I think this is so important because I think there's just, we don't know what we don't know, right? And especially in the invention area and trying to get a product out into the marketplace, as soon as you take one step, you don't know what to do with the next step. And then comes the next step. And then comes the next step. And the good news is that through this community that you build, you have hundreds and thousands of inventors who have been there and done that. And you can lean on them for support. And, you know, you don't have to be scared that this is a community that you're, you know, you, it's not like going to Reddit where they're going to roast you and like, you know, get get on you. They're going to, they really want to help you. And I found that this maker community, this inventor community, especially through Gromit, we all want to help each other. And I think what you've put together throughout your entire career and now put into this app and uh, this community is so powerful for inventors because we need a place to turn to. And sometimes it's not our neighbor. It's not our kids, friends, parents that are, you know, in our, in our, it's other inventors. It's people who have been through it. And for you to put this together for them is incredible. I know you also have all these other resources that they want to go deeper, go get the books, go buy the course, you know, hire them for consulting, like do all the things. But this community, I think is just one of the most powerful things that is out there for inventors today. Thank you so much, Greg. And look, uh, there's people that can help within and help each other. And then I'm around. And that's what I love is to be able to just, how can I help you? Let's, let's, let me understand where you are and what you want to do. And then I'll help you to get to where you want to go. And there might be a point where a lot of times, Greg, many times, probably more than, than, than not, I help people to realize that they should stop and wait for their next idea. And that's okay. It's heartbreaking. And some people are kind of really deep in. Some people are starting from scratch and I'm happy that they, they see it and I'm glad that I got to them first. But they might be a, that fifth or sixth step in. And then I'm kind of helping them to figure that out. And 
sometimes they stop and sometimes they keep going. As long as they're not infringing, they're taking a chance. But for the most part, research is really important. And I think that people should really take the time before you go deeper to just make sure that it's something that you can commercialize and how to commercialize it and have a plan. And that's what I love to do is catch people from the start to be able to help them to make better decisions like that. Well, if you are in the Gromit community and you're, whether it's your first idea, your hundredth idea, make sure you get into Brian's world, join that Inventor Smart community, check out inventorsmart.com, his books, programs, all that stuff. Make sure you tell him that the Gromit sent you so he knows that. And uh, Brian, this has been a blast. I loved getting some of those early memories of that curious tinkerer, you know, back in elementary school days, all the way into some of the amazing products that you've created and now this community. This has been a, this has been a blast. And I just, I just want to say thank you for doing what you do for inventors out there today. Thank you, Greg. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. And look, uh, if you have a product, put it on the grommet. Hey, I like that too. Inventor Smart Community, App Store, uh, uh, Google Play, InventorSmart.com. Brian, thanks so much, man. Thank you. Well, if you liked this interview, and more importantly, you maybe want to be our next featured case study who launched their product on Gromit, I've got some great news for you. Because right now, you can sign up to launch your product on Gromit absolutely free. That's right. There are zero sign-up fees, and right now we're charging 0% commissions for all brands that launch their product on Gromit. To get started, just head on over to thegromit.com and click on that button that says Submit Your Product. Go through the application process, and we can't wait to launch your product on Gromit real soon. Thank <laughs> you.